Nancy Drew, Weirdness at Waverly Academy, a story by Argofoms. Chapter 60, Izzy's Information. Nancy was going to leave the room when she saw something on the ground. Picking it up, she saw that it was another black cat note. A second black cat note, Nancy said. Something bad happens to anyone who gets two of them, right? Right, Corrine said. You'd better be careful from now on. It could be for you, Nancy pointed out. It's not like there's a name on it. She showed Corrine the note, which read, You were warned. Now you'll pay. Uh, in that case, we should both be careful, Corrine said. Come back with my food, okay? Sure, Nancy said. She left the room, then went downstairs to the snack shack. Getting snacks for the various students wasn't too interesting, but at least Nancy got to overhear some interesting gossip. Did you know Izzy once got her huge earring stuck on a doorknob? How embarrassing! I heard that Mel hopes to work at Disneyland for a living. Corrine stole the school blueprints for some unknown reason. Leela hasn't left the rec room in over a week. I'm really starting to get worried about her. Did you see Rachel and Izzy's rap battle last week? Rachel's rhyming skills are the best! You know that new girl, Becca something? The one from France? I heard that she talks to herself. That's it! Nancy shouted. Snack shop is closed! The various people in line complained, but Nancy closed up shop and went back to her room. She traded a sack of food for a flash drive containing Corrine's essay. Nancy went to the library next. She got on the school computer and uploaded Corrine's essay for Rachel's project. The essay was about Edgar Allan Poe's mysterious death. It seemed that Mr. Poe died while surrounded by malevolent forces, a corrupt doctor, an executor who was Poe's rival, and perhaps worst of all, Nurse Rita Hallowell. Knowing Miss Hallowell, she probably forced her patients to undergo a series of puzzles before they could check into the hospital. Izzy was in the library, as usual, so Nancy decided to talk to her. Hey, Izzy, she said. Hello, Becca, Izzy said, turning from her laptop to talk to Nancy. What's up? I've got a request, Nancy said. I need to know what the Blackwood Society's chant is. You're the leader, right? All right, who blabbed? Izzy asked. Uh, I'm not at liberty to say, Nancy said. But since you are the leader, you can tell me the chant. Why should I do it? Izzy asked, looking suspicious. Because we're friends and you're a really nice person? Nancy guessed. I'm the student body president, Izzy said. I rule this school, Becca. No one's going to force me into doing something, especially not an uppity transfer student like you. Nancy decided it was time to put Izzy in her place by using another one of Becca Sawyer's sassy comebacks. Transfer student? More like a uh, transform student, Nancy said, because I will transform Waverly Academy. If you don't tell me the chant, that is. Uh, whatever, Izzy said. It's not like it even makes sense anyway. Three is fine, but five is more. Even nineteen defeats four. Should just seven become lore, at least two will find the door. Thank you, Nancy said. Chapter 61. The Chapter with a Cliffhanger. Now that I know about the Blackwood Society, can I become a member? Nancy asked. No, Izzy said. But I really want to join. It sounds cool, Nancy pleaded. No, and that is final, Izzy said. I'm the leader, so I get to choose who joins, and I will never choose a girl I don't like. What about Mel? Nancy asked. She's in the club, and you don't like her. She was invited before I became the leader, Izzy said. Now beat it, Becca. I've got work to do. Seeing as she wasn't going to get any more information out of Izzy, Nancy decided to return to her room. She was somewhat surprised when she entered. For the first time since Nancy had arrived 60 chapters ago, 
Corrine was not in the room. Nancy took this opportunity to snoop through Corrine's things. There wasn't much of interest besides some graph paper and a note which read, Cellar. Corrine is in the cellar? Nancy asked. What a coincidence! I was just about to go there myself. Nancy returned to the cellar, now that she had all the information needed to get Rita Hallowell's treasure. Corrine wasn't in the cellar, but there was a set of blueprints there. Nancy compared these new blueprints to the ones Rita Hallowell had left behind. The blueprint showed that the valves on the Dupin furnace were numbered. So far, it looked like everything matched Rita's notes. Do I match the blueprint numbers with the Blackwood Society's numbers? Nancy asked. She pulled the six numbers in order, and the grate to the furnace opened up. Nancy peeked at the opening, which was big enough to crawl through, when a commanding voice said, Stop! Nancy turned around. Standing in front of Nancy was a girl she had never seen before. She had heavy eye shadow, and she looked furious. A black beret was dangling on the side of her fire-red hair. Becca Sawyer! Nancy gasped. Chapter 62 Becca Sawyer Yes, that's right, Becca said. I'm Becca Sawyer, the real Becca Sawyer. Nancy's jaw dropped. Impossible, she said. Becca Sawyer isn't a real person. That's just a fake name I've been using. Fake? More like, give me a break, Becca said. You didn't even bother to check if I existed before you stole my identity, did you? No, because you're not real, Nancy said. Rebecca Sawyer is just a dumb name I made up by putting together two names from Tom Sawyer. Tom Sawyer? More like, call a lawyer, Becca said. Because I'm suing you for identity theft, Nancy Drill. I don't believe it, Nancy said, slumping back against the wall. As soon as I heard some bumbling American detective was pretending to be me, I came here from France as fast as I could, Becca said. Do you know what sort of damage you've done to my reputation? Everyone thinks I'm a bumbling weirdo. Huh? No way, Nancy said. Everyone likes me as Becca Sawyer. I'm working really hard on fitting in. Do this, this absurdities, Becca said. I know you're unpopular here. I saw all the tweets and text messages. Texts? More like wrecks? Because you've wrecked your only chance at fitting in here at Waverly. That's not true, Nancy said. I might not be the most popular girl, but I've made lots of friends. Mel and Rachel and Paige and Leela and... Stuffed animals do not count, Becca said. Did you come all the way from France to be mean to me? Nancy asked. Look, I'm sorry for borrowing your name without permission, but you don't have to be rude about it. Here's what you're going to do, Becca said. You are going to tell everyone, right now, that you are not Becca Sawyer. Then you're going to publicly apologize for making me look ridiculous. I can't do that, Nancy said. I'm an undercover detective. I can't tell people my real identity. It'll hurt my case if I do. And it'll hurt my reputation if you don't, Becca said. Look, I'm about five minutes away from solving the mystery, finding the lost treasure, and stopping the black cat, Nancy said. Can't this wait until after that? Becca Sawyer hesitated for a second. Finding the lost treasure, she asked. What lost treasure? Rita Hallowell's treasure, Nancy said. I think it has something to do with Edgar Poe. I don't know who those people are, Becca Sawyer said. But if word got out that Becca Sawyer solved a mystery and found a treasure... Yes, Nancy asked. Becca thought it over. Okay, Nancy, she said. I'll give you one more day. Solve this mystery by then, and let Becca Sawyer get all the credit. If you don't, confess everything. It's a deal, Nancy said, giving Becca a hug. 
Yay, new friends! Ugh, I am not your, uh, whatever, Becca Sawyer said. Good luck with the mystery, American Becca. Chapter 63, The Black Cat Becca Sawyer left the cellar, so Nancy returned to the mystery. The hidden passageway, which was part of the school furnace, was now opened, so Nancy crawled through the dirty grate in order to reach the hidden room. Nancy's heart flooded with anticipation, because she knew this was the end of her adventure. At the other end of the short tunnel, Nancy would find the black cat, the culprit who had been attacking all the girls at Waverly. Nancy pushed and pulled herself out of the end of the tunnel, then stood up. In front of Nancy was something that looked like a stone altar. A rough-looking book was on top of the altar, and standing behind it was Corrine Myers, Nancy's roommate. Becca, Corrine said, jumping backwards a bit. What are you doing here? Catching you red-handed, Nancy said. The entire black cat scheme was just a distraction so you could get your hands on... What is that, anyway? What do you think? Corrine asked. It's Rita Hallowell's treasure, a collection of Edgar Allan Poe's unpublished manuscripts. Before he died, he gave all his unfinished works to her. I've been looking for this for two months now. How did you know it was here? Nancy asked. I'm the one with Rita Hallowell's journal. She had a journal? Crane asked. Yeah, it's filled with clues and puzzles that led me to this room, Nancy said. Corrine looked upset. Darn, she said. If I knew there was a journal from the beginning, that would have made things simpler. All I knew was that Rita Hallowell hid her treasure somewhere in the building. So you stole the blueprints and searched the dorm room by room, Nancy guessed. That's how you found out about Rachel's twin sister in the attic. Oh, you're good, Green said. You've been in school for three days, and in that time you found out what took me months to learn. There's a reason I'm a valedictorian candidate, Nancy said. It's not just because I'm an undercover detective. You're a detective? Corrine asked. Oops, Nancy said. They hired a detective to catch me? Corrine asked, sounding impressed. I didn't think the headmistress took me that seriously. But if that's true, Becca, I guess we have a standoff here. You can't let me get away, and I can't let you get away. It's over, Corrine. Nancy said. Just give up quietly. Too bad for you, I've got an ace up my sleeve, Corrine said. I've had plenty of time to examine this room and find the deadly trap that Rita left behind. The deadly trap? Nancy asked. Yoink! Corrine said as she grabbed the book, accidentally on purpose set off the trip stone, then escaped through the back entrance before it shot.